How you doing? I want to talk today about uh, being filled with the fullness of Christ and how that will allow you to not be deceived by fine-sounding arguments of the world. Because you know, it's not somebody else's prayer that we really need. It's not, you know, to have demons cast out of us that most of us really need. What most of us really need if we're struggling and we're still struggling with ourself and we're not really comprehending the love of God and we're still feeling like we're having suffering and feeling like, like we're having problems with our thoughts. It's the truth, Jesus says. Jesus says it's the truth that sets you free. So when you have an understanding of the truth, that's going to set you free. That's what you need. That's having an understanding of the truth is what is going to keep you free to where you don't need other people to be praying for you all the time and you know you're always just seem like you're going through struggles and it always seems like you're failing when you know the truth no then you can have a struggle but you're going to be able to have faith through that struggle you're going to be able to overcome that struggle because the truth is going to be stronger than the lies the the temptations that the world tries to bring in and then it tries to change your thoughts and make you believe lies about the world. See, those are all fine sounding arguments and they can come because they can come from Satan and they can also come from other people that are around us. So that's why we need to be established in our identity in Christ and exactly who we are. You see, who you are is that you're completely forgiven it's not a license to sin that you're free completely free from sin in Christ that doesn't mean it's a license to sin right because Paul tells us uh, you know shall we continue in sin that grace may abound no we shouldn't continue in sin but we are completely free from sin so I'm no longer focused on sin I'm no longer focused on trying to like overcome sin no now the battle actually is is for me to continue to battle to see who i am in christ right because i'm completely free from sin it's and it's not that's not going to make me continue to want to sin but that's going to set me free from the lies and the guilt and the shame that's going to cause me to continue to sin and it's going to set me free. So if we really come to the understanding of the love of Christ, then we're not going to be taking the place of judging other people like that either. See, that's what God's doing. If God could have been moved by our hurts and our struggles and us not coming to Him and, and all the things that we tended to do to other people and think about other people, if God felt like that about us, then man, we'd be in big trouble because, you know, he would have done throwing us out a long time ago. And I mean, think about Jesus. If Jesus would have acted in that manner, which is just a selfish manner, that's what we're really trying to overcome. We're overcoming being selfish. And uh, we can't do that in our own power. We need the power of God. And Ephesians chapter 3, we get that full knowledge and that comprehension of the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of the love of God. And, you know, Jesus Christ had that. We can have that as well because Christ has given us, you know, full measure and we can come to that understanding. See, and those are things that we really have to start seeing that we can come to the full understanding and the love of God. But we have to see our identity. We have to really see who we are. You know, Paul says here, we died to sin. How can we live it in any longer? And then he's saying, uh, you know, shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace by no means. So sin shall not be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. See, what you really have to do is you have to get into your room. You've got to get into a quiet place and you really have to declare these things over your life. Uh, I, I so thank you, Father, that right now you have completely set me free. I am completely forgiven. I am completely loved. You are so towards me right now. Father, 
I know that I've messed up in the past. I know that I've struggled and failed, but I don't want to any any part, any little bit of that old man, Father. I want him to be dead. He's been dead. And he's in the ground, and I don't want him to come up again, Father. I thank you that you've completely forgiven me, and you're showing me the way. I thank you that you're guiding me. You can get in, and you can just speak that way from a real true heart of love and declaring these things in faith. Because when you put these things out in faith, then grace will come to make it a reality in your life. And that's what happens. And that's what we need. That's the power of God. That grace will come and make it a reality to make you that new man. Because that's who you are. You're a new man in Christ if you're in Jesus Christ. So, we see that we're no longer a slave to sin. And we should count ourselves dead to sin and alive to God. And when we can begin to really do that in faith, then we're going to be, be, be able to put that old man down, put him to death. So, if we look here in Colossians, which is what I was wanting to read just really quickly here, because it's just really amazing. He says, Paul is saying in Colossians chapter 2, My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. So what are you knowing? You're knowing the mystery of God. You're, you're, that's the same thing that he's saying in Ephesians 2, to know that love of Christ, to fully have that understanding. And when you, when you fully know that, then that means you can't be hurt by anybody. You can't wake up in the morning and have anger and uh, bitterness. You can't be hurt by anybody. How can anybody hurt you if you're completely free and you completely understand love? Because love keeps no account of wrongs. So what you see is that all of those things where you can be hurt and be, you know, hurt by other people and, and all of this stuff comes out of you trying to love yourself. It's the self is still alive in you, this old man, and you're still listening to that. And when we really come to this understanding of love, that old man is completely buried. He's gone and he's not rising up. We can't be hurt. But it is a reality. The thing is, is, it's already a reality right now. Christ has already given it to us. And then he says that, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I tell you this, so no, no one can deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. You see? Because what happens is, is that the world and... You know, sometimes even people in churches, we get this mindset that doesn't, you know, and it could even be like psychology, Christian psychology. You get in this mindset that really doesn't have to do with this unlimited truth of love. You know, we always want to slip a little bit of thing in. Well, brother, you know, you can't, nobody can be completely free from sin. Well, brother, you know, you're always going to mess up. Well, brother, you know, we're always going to struggle. It's like, no. It's like, stop that, because that's not what my Bible says. It says that we can be completely free from sin. It says that we can have the complete understanding of Christ and this love of Christ, and we can walk and completely be in it. And, and why do we continue to struggle if we are in Christ? Generally, it's because... We're allowing other people to deceive us by fine-sounding arguments, my friend. You can't be deceived by these fine-sounding arguments. Because they're going to... And, and watch, watch. Look what he says. He says, if you go a few uh, verses a little bit uh, forward here, he says, Be strengthened in the faith, be rooted and built up in Him. Uh, that's talking about being in the love of God, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Because if you're like that, then you can't be deceived. You won't be able to, you won't be deceived because the truth that sets you free will be so feeling in your mind and you'll be so consumed with it that you can't be deceived and you're going to be able to walk out. You're going to be able to love your brothers. You're not going to have things against them. You, it's going to be God inside of you, Christ in us, and God can tell himself anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Because that's what it is, my friend. And then he says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of the world rather than in Christ. And I'm sorry to say it, but that's what we're doing in the Christian psychology and you know, people talking about marriages and stuff like that. No, it's you know, it's fifty fifty, as long as it's fifty fifty, then you know, that's how it should be in marriage. And it's like, no. What does that have to do with love? Love takes account of no wrong. And, you know, if, if your partner starts, that only leaves you, if it's 50-50, if it's then that only leads you open to be looking at them and say, well, you're not doing your part here, you know. Well, I'm fed up here. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know, I'm giving 60%. You're only giving 40%. You know, you need to step up here. You know, that doesn't have anything to do with the love of Christ. So that's what he's talking about. These little deceptive uh, sounding arguments that we allow into our mind to just slightly deceive us. And if we allow those things in, then the truth is not going to be able to set you free and you're still going to have these little areas. And if you don't uproot that, if you don't see that there, it's like the yeast in the batch of dough. It's only going to continue to grow because it's still a part of yourself and the thing has to be totally dead, right? We've been buried with Christ and we're raised up with Him. So let, let us not be deceived and let us not be trusting in these basic principles of the world. Even if it's people in the church saying these things, the Spirit will reveal it and sometimes you just have to speak up. Sometimes you just have to speak up in love and say, no, brother, that's in complete faith. You know, and I've had some people even though I've spoken up and said things in, in faith about things, you know, they get offended. But there's nothing I can do about that. And, you know, we try to do it in love. Brother, you know what? I'm really not sure about what you're saying here. It doesn't sound like it's completely in faith. Can we talk about this? You know, because the way I'm reading my Bible is that God says we can be completely free. We're free from sin. I'm not to be focusing on it anymore. You know, I'm alive in God. I'm alive in Christ. And when I'm alive in that identity, you know, then Christ, it's going to be about Him. It's going to be about Christ. And we're going to be able to fill, be filled with the fullness of Christ. You see, these are the things that your mind should be focused on, not about your failures, not about sin, and not about how you've messed up. You know, all of that, when you get into some of that, it just becomes a false humility. Uh, you know, it's through understanding and faith that we're set free. It's through having faith in, the, in who we are in God. And, and, and it brings a confidence when you're in love, when you really get into love. You have a confidence. Yes, you have a love and you have a way that you be with people where you don't hurt them, but there's also a confidence that comes where you can boldly come to God and you can boldly speak the truth. And sometimes other people are going to take that the wrong way and they might feel like they're being hurt by it. But the thing is, you're not going to be hurt by it because you're in complete love. You're not going to be offended. You're not going to be hurt. So you can stay in that situation. You don't have to run off because now I have to, you know, oh, they disagree with me. So now, you know, we need to put up defenses and try to defend myself from them and work up something. No, you can stay in that situation and you can work with that person and then you can allow that truth to flood in on them and overflow and then break down the lies that are in them and give them that truth that's going to build them up. And then they're going to see that, right? They're going to see that. God bless you. Hope this has uh, blessed you today. All right. Bye-bye.